I'm a freestyle homeschooler and I'm making this video here to demonstrate what um, foundational resources we use in our schooling and how we use them. Hi, I'm Julia and welcome to my channel, Sharing the Discovery. My little son um, is here with me uh, playing next to me, so you may hear him um, in the background. But let's get started. We live in an age of easily accessible information. <laughs> we can get facts and stories just with um, our fingertips uh, on a screen. We can look at books and read. We can watch videos. We can listen to podcasts. There are so many different ways that we can access information um, and education. So there is a very valid response to all of this, um, and that is one of overwhelm. There's so much to take in. There's so many channels that it's coming to us at. How do we discern what to emphasize, what to um, receive into our homes and into our minds and hearts? And um, that is something that curriculum has done so well for us and that is curriculum's purpose really to um, weed through all of the resources and to hone down in on what the creators of each individual curriculum feel is the best that can be offered the best of the best um, and it makes it easy curriculum is a lifesaver on many different levels it is wonderful to have a guide. So while I haven't adopted one main curriculum at this point in our school journey, I do have two main foundational resources that I turn to and use as springboards for the themes and the topics that we explore on a weekly and a monthly basis. The, the resource that we use on a monthly basis is Read Aloud Revival. Read Aloud Revival has um, usually uh, seasons, so it's usually three months at a time. I may be wrong, I'm a fairly new member to Read Aloud Revival, um, their premium, but um, from what I understand, it goes three months at a time generally. There is a family read aloud book, there's a mama read aloud uh, book recommendation, and then there's picture book recommendations for each month. The read alouds are very well picked in the sense that they're intended to span a wide range of ages. So I'm going to show you the current um, calendar um, of Read Aloud Revival. So as you can see, a place to hang the moon. This is the Read Aloud for the three months. The Lazy Genius Way is the Mama Club recommended book for these for this season. And then for each of these books, um, Nobody Likes a Goblin, we did activities associated with that. We met the author, which was um, a Read Aloud Revival premium interview. And we went to visit a rock house nearby, um, which kind of went along with the theme, the goblin hid in the caves. Um, but I'll post the video where I talked more about this um, down below. And then last month was Overground Railroad. And I also did a video um, encompassing that book um, in part. We dove in a little bit to studying um, the racial history in the United States, slavery, um, Underground Railroad, um, and then the Overground Railroad um, is a book that took place actually after slavery was uh, abolished, um, I think sometime in the 1900s. And then this month has been the Oxcart Man. And I've also made a video of our activities surrounding the Oxcart Man uh, last week. However, we are still immersed in the themes surrounding the Oxcart Man. We're doing several things um, in regards to that. We're still reading in regards to that. I've got books that I've ordered from the library that are going to tie in to having Oxcart Man as a theme for this month. So that kind of gives an overview of what we do um, on a monthly basis with a picture book as our, our theme. So I kind of plan it out, we immerse ourselves, 
and we have fun and we learn. I know that perhaps um, there may be the thought that like picture books are for a younger kid, but um, I would push back against that a little bit and say, hmm, not necessarily. Overground Railroad was actually um, a mature uh, picture book and one that I think would really be more easily grasped for older children. Even, uh, you know, young teenage, young teenagers. Um, and I think that um, we don't necessarily have to think that picture books are just for children. And so when I look into the future of our homeschooling journey, I don't see us leaving the picture books behind prematurely. Some may say, why are you still doing picture books this <laughs> late? But I see picture books as um, very eloquently worded a lot of the time, using um, vocabulary that is uh, quite extensive. Sentence structure is impressive and there's a lot to be gained from illustrations, uh, beautiful illustrations. So picture books aren't just uh, always for children. Obviously there are some picture books that would just be considered for younger children, but picture books span a whole variety, you know, there's, there's so many, um, so many picture books out there. Okay, the second resource I want to share with you is um, from God's World News. And right now we are using God's Big World because that is, um, this is the publication for the age group that um, I'm learning with right now. So they, every two months, they send out a little magazine, which is actually pamphlets stapled together. And you can pull off the cover and then pull off each pamphlet, which is just like two pages. Let me just show you what a pamphlet looks like. There's the front page, which is always the um, story that there is an activity or a further resource suggested in the parent-teacher handout. This particular pamphlet is about um, uh, the Netherlands, about a new bridge that was built by robots and a 3D printer and welders. Um, so that was an interesting um, topic. The next um, um, story was on otters and kelp and their relationship. Symbiotic relationship is called symbiotic. <laughs> and, and the last one was on um, cheese in Wisconsin and that there's actually lawmakers um, talking right now about whether or not to make the Colby cheese the state cheese of Wisconsin. And the last page is a maze where there's actually the opportunity to talk about right and left and to use that as a guide in how to navigate um, the turtle all the way to the ocean, safely to the ocean. As you can see, we did it once and then my children did it multiple times over. God's World News is a current events newsletter. So it's all about things that are happening in the world recently. Um, it's a lot of fun because it's it's interesting things. It's not things that you would n n find on the news necessarily. It's like those hidden um, <clears throat> hidden things. Um, I will also download online their par their parent teacher teaching guide, and I will actually put in the dates on each week of what I think you know a. Uh, we will be doing that in. Now obviously that is quite flexible because there are some weeks that for various reasons we don't get to it and that is quite all right. Try to schedule it out just a couple weeks um, so we're finishing up the previous month just a couple weeks into the new month so that if for some reason the mailing is late or whatever um, I don't have to like push anything back. So I'm going to show you an example of the additional activities that we've done for three of the God's World News publications. So for the Dutch Netherlands one, it, it was recommended in the parent-teacher guide to kind of go in depth a little bit more into learning about Holland. I didn't actually use the links that they shared. I looked it up, I thought about it, I'm like, no, this isn't going to work for us, but I would like to bounce off the Netherlands idea. I had a a storybook tucked away called The Little Dutch Boy by Sarah Toast, adapted by Sarah Toast. And it's the classic story of the little boy who saw that there was a hole in the dike 
and made the, ch the choice to um, plug it up all night. Um, and uh, he, in effect, uh, saved the town because of that courageous decision, because um, otherwise the, the dike would have broken and the town would have been washed away. Um, and then I found a little um, like printout, which it becomes a book all about the Netherlands. I'll put the link for this down below. I really loved this resource and my children loved it as well. I printed it out, I cut it out, and I stapled them all ahead of time. So that after we had read The Little Dutch Boy, this became a very easy transition to let's look a little bit more about the Netherlands. I liked that these books had, like, that you could trace the words. My daughter is a little young yet for doing that, but I liked that it had that option. We found a picture of the flag and was able to color those col uh, the, you know, how the flag is there, red, white, and blue. And this just has a page after page of different things about um, things that are um, would be related to the Dutch. Um, there's the kind of cheese. Um, bicycles are popular there. Clogs are obviously a classic symbol of Holland. Tulips, which you can't see right there. Maybe it's nighttime. I don't know. <laughs> Tulips. And windmills, obviously. Iconic symbol of Holland. So my children still carry these little booklets around and they really enjoy doing that. Now, that Holland um, pamphlet happened a couple weeks ago now, but we're still actually immersing ourselves a little bit in in this, uh, the Netherlands and learning about them. Right now we're reading The Wheel on the School, which is a sunlight recommended book, um, and it takes place in Holland. Really interesting story. The kids are requesting it a lot, and I was able to um, I had the opportunity to order some Stroopwafel from Misfits Markets, which I purchase from regularly. And um, so we kind of got to enjoy a, a bit of uh, Dutch food here. Um, the second pamphlet was about trains, uh, the fastest train in China, and talking about why it's the fastest and how it uses magnets so that it actually doesn't connect with the track. It floats uh, just above the track, um, and that's what allows it to go so fast because there's no friction holding it back. And so we were able to get out a magnet set. And, which my son was playing with earlier um, and we were able to experiment with that and work with that and figure out a little bit about how magnets work. The most recent God's World news that we've done was this week and it was about swans and how there's swans that belong to the Queen of England and every year they have to get caught and counted and checked over and measured and tagged and then they're released back into um, the pond where they live. And the parent teacher guide had recommended that we check out um, this book by E.B. White, The Trumpet of the Swan. I had never read this book. It's obviously a classic, so I had come across it in, in various bookshops and book sales. Um, but we read it, my children loved it, and we learned so much about swans in it. And I had ordered this ahead of time, so we had actually finished reading it by the time um, the week rolled around to learn about this page. And so when I pulled out this page, the kids are like, oh, swans! And they were so interested in learning about this because we had been reading the book. I love how things like that tie together. I, I just love it. And that's part of what um, gives me extra motivation to keep doing school this way is that there are some things that connect together that I couldn't have planned. And those organic connections are very meaningful. And I think that they are potentially more memorable and more impactful because they're not something that can be orchestrated or planned. And so that's motivation for me to keep pressing on into this style of 
learning together. So that brings me to the end of what I had planned to share. I've been super excited about putting together this video because I feel that it's so central. These resources are so central to what I do in homeschooling and they're central to what I'm sharing in other videos. So I've, I've been looking forward to making this video. Thanks for joining me here today and I hope that um, you might check back. Say bye. Bye. Bye.